Let's pretend for a second that you have lent me money. You lent me $1,000, and now I'm going to have to pay you back over the course of the next five years. So five years from today, you're going to receive your full $1,000 back. But that's not all. I'm going to have to pay you coupon payments along the way. And we negotiated a 5% coupon rate. So this will be a $50 payment that I will pay you at the end of each year for the next five years. We also figured out, based on the risk that I might not pay you back, that there's going to be a 6% interest rate involved with this bond. If you could sell the rights to this series of cash flows that represents this bond to someone else, how much would they go for? That is the price of the bond or the present value of the bond. Let's dive into how you can calculate that using a financial calculator. All of the details of the bond that I've just described can be seen in this table right here. But now we're going to take all these values and plug them into this formula to calculate the present value of a bond. So let's just walk through really briefly what this formula is saying. So we're saying that the present value of a bond is going to be equal to the coupons divided by one plus the yield to maturity. So this is just for coupon one. And then we'll see for coupon two, it's the second coupon divided by one plus the yield to maturity squared. So this exponent that you see here, this two that we don't see right here, is because this coupon is going to come further into the future which means that we have to discount it by a larger amount to get it back into the present value. If the yield to maturity is positive, that means each of these coupons becomes less valuable as we move further out into the future, because I would rather have my money closer to today than further out in the future. Another important thing to keep in mind is that on the very last cash flow, we are going to receive our $50 coupon plus that future value, so the original $1,000 notional that I had borrowed. So if we map out all these cash flows, you'll see that at time zero, so today, we're wanting to calculate the present value. And then one year from today, we're going to get $50, but we're going to have to discount that value back to whatever is the present value of $50 one year from now to today. And then it's going to be the same thing for year two, same thing for year three, same thing for year four. And then at the fifth year, we're gonna to have to take $1,000 plus the $50 and discount that all the way back to the present value of today. Now that yield to maturity that we discount back by is actually going to be equal to this 6%. And this represents my risk as a borrower. So if I was a more risky borrower, let's say instead of 6%, I was more risky and it was 8%. If it was 8%, that means you'd be dividing each of these coupons by a larger number, which means that the coupon's present value would be lower, which makes sense. If I, let's say if I am owed $1,000, by someone who is unlikely to pay me that $1,000, that potential future cash flow should be less valuable to me than if someone who I knew was a near guarantee to pay me back $1,000 owed me $1,000. So that's why this yield to maturity is higher for riskier borrowers and lower for more credit worthy borrowers. So this whole thing is going to look like the present value is equal to. 50 divided by uh, 1.06. So that's the first coupon plus 50 divided by 1.06 squared. That is the second coupon. Then I can just skip the next two and go to the last one, which is going to be actually 1050 divided by 1.06 to the power of five. And we could do all this math or we could just calculate it using our financial calculator. The calculator app you see on my screen right now should look a lot like your financial calculator, especially if it's the Texas Instruments BA2+. Now let's hop in to calculate the price of this bond. 
you'll see that this particular row of buttons is exactly the same as all of these inputs. So there is five separate inputs. We just need to take the four that we already know and then compute for the one that we don't know. So let's just go one by one. So we know the payment's $50. So we'll hit 50 and then PMT. Then we'll take the yield to maturity of 6%, which is the same as the interest per year. So we hit six and then hit I slash Y. Then we take the number of periods, which is five. So five is N. And then we're going to also grab our future value of 1000. And we'll put click FV after we click 1000. And now we just need to calculate our present value PV, which we don't know. And so we'll hit compute present value. And we get a value of $957.88. You can comfortably ignore this negative sign. So that tells us if you wanted to sell the rights of these cash flows to someone else or this bond to someone else, you could sell it for this value. <laughs>